fiber-resistant receptacles. Uh, all they did was just add some items to a list. So let's take a look at the uh, list. This is my grandson, Carson. And, and the whole tamper-resistant receptacle rule came back in, what, 2011 or something like that? Yeah. Or 2008. And it had to do with, uh, um, I forgot, I think 2,100 kids went to the hospital over 11 years, and 80% of those kids were boys. And I'm thinking, 20% were girls? I'm like, how is that even possible? Women are so smart. And then somebody in the class said to me, trust me, there was a boy involved. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, now, now, now I totally get it. Because there's a percentage of women that actually trust the men. You know what I mean? Like, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Are you sure? No, I don't want you. Oh, yeah, come on. And then, of course, it's like, why did I even do that? Okay. So we have then kids going to the hospital. People did not want tamper-resistant require, requirements in the code. They're saying, listen, that's the responsibility of a parent. And of course, well, maybe parents' responsibilities and maybe parents are not quite as responsible. And so you have this, this whole deal going back. But they added in the code in 2008. And once they added in the code, so when I, my first 2008 code uh, changed this book in my book, I, I took this picture of my grandson. And I said, Carson, Carson. I gave him a spoon. What did I really want to do? I wanted to give him a screwdriver, okay? <laughs> Seriously, that's what I really wanted to do. But I, I know that it's going to show to people, and I need to show, like, I'm actually a responsible person. Not that, but I'm not going to go that part. So, and if you look at it, yes, it has the plastic cover plates, and I did not want them on there at all. I want to take the cover plates off. I want to put a receptacle's hand, and I want to say, Carson. So all I did was say, hey, Carson. I gave him a spoon, and I pointed to the receptacle. He had to be, like, eight feet away. I said, Carson. And all he does is a boy. It's a magnet. It's automatically, genetically went right over there, and I can guarantee you. Wow. If I had to give him a screwdriver and I'd taken those cover plates off, he would have been there for a really, really long time until he, t he disassembled that entire receptacle. I'm pretty comfortable with that. So then my daughter calls me after the code book gets changed. She goes, <clears throat> Megan, she goes, Dad, what's my son doing in your photo, <laughs> in your book? <laughs> so, boys, so now we have the rules, and what they've done is... They've expanded the rules from the dwelling units to the guest rooms, to child care, to preschool, to business offices, to subsets of assemblies, to dormitories, to living, assisted living facilities. Pretty much anywhere there could possibly be a boy, okay, <laughs> you need to put a tamper-resistant receptacle. Regardless of the age. Regardless, Regardless of the age. <laughs> Did they assisted have? living facilities. <laughs> <laughs> See, it goes all the way from child care to assisted. <laughs> You're absolutely right. That 80 year old guy, give him a screwdriver. He's going to be taking that apart. You know, my son Josiah, I didn't even give him the screwdriver. Yeah. He, yeah. he just took the screwdriver out of my tool bag, which was laying on the floor in the living room. And my wife and I were not even close. And he went over and he stuck it in the outlet. And pushed down on it and blew it up <laughs> and he pulled it out and he got mad and he got so mad. I think he actually got shocked. He stuck it back in there Arr, second time. So fortunately the breaker trip the first time. All right. So let's talk about the changes. Dave, you want to pick up those changes? Is, is this a confession for child endangerment? <laughs> <laughs> and I sure hope you change all the outlets to tamper resistant after the fact in his house. Uh, or is he an electrician now? <laughs> He might be an electrician. Not yet, but he might be. Carson might be an electrician. In some of the classes I've had, well, that's how most electricians. That's how you become an electrician. That's right? how you become one. I, I put my fingers in, in, light so in the light sockets. I know more than once. <clears throat> I mean, as a kid, I know that. All right. Do we want Eric? Yeah, research to give me signals over here. Is Look at bullet number four on temper-resistant receptacles. Is bullet number four new even though it hasn't been shaded? Okay, let's get into that. I, I, you guys correct me inside here. Let's go to the changes. Ready for this? All 15, 20 ampere, 125, and 250 volt non-locking type receptacles and areas specified below shall be tamper resistant. Dwelling units, including attached and detached garages and accessory buildings to dwelling units and common areas of a multifamily building. Common areas? Okay, let's go to the house. Basically, the house, the detached garage, accessory buildings, anywhere basically on a dwelling unit. We okay with that? We expanded to all those. Right. And then the common areas of multifamily. That's a pretty broad change. Mm -hmm. You have a condominium, right? And Lobby. you have all these common areas. They got pavilions outside. They, they have inside the buildings. They got the, the little club Exercise rooms. rooms. Exercise I'm sorry? rooms. Exercise rooms. Exercise rooms. The entire, again, could there be a, you guys say, could there be a boy, regardless of the age, there? Okay. Well, then we need to have that in there. And then. 
We go over to guest rooms and guest suites. Yeah, boys, are, they take them. Actually, they take them out on vacations and trips. And then they add hotels. Well, they had hotels and they add motels. Not that I know what a hotel is. Not that I know what a motel is. But whatever hotel the motel is, they're there. And they're common. Whoa. Yep. And they're lobby. common areas. The lobby. Okay, the, the common area. So you could have a hotel. The eating areas, the hallways. But you can have stuff the behind the door areas. that you're not. I mean, you, True. In, a, in, a, True. In, a, in a in a uh, at this point in a hotel resistant. in a motel, you know, there's yeah. we, we were staying in a hotel right now. There's places in a hotel that's not common, right? We can't get behind where they're making the foods and you know those kind of they're stuff. Back the kitchen, of house, they're back of house areas, not the back of house. That's the back of house areas, no. The back of the house, we're not. Okay, okay, got so that's a that's a. Big one. Brian, let's make this one as a code change. Big one is a video clip. Child care facilities. Well, we'd have to, there's a definition, Dave. Yeah, we have the definition for child care facilities. And in there, they reference in item four. The Go on, hold on one second. Where's there's it? a definition in for child care areas in Where? the beginning. Tell us a little bit more specific. I believe that's in 406.2. Perfect. I just want to, somebody listening, I want them to be able to be comfortable. So I guess I want to verify that it's still there this cycle. Oh, it is. It is. It is. Okay. Mario okay. says he says it's okay. So there is a definition. Now go there. So in 406.2, which is receptacles, there's a definition of child care facilities. Go ahead. And the child care facilities just references a building or structure or portion thereof for education, supervision, supervisory, or personal care services for more than four children, seven years old or less. Okay. So in child care, that's what it's going to be a daycare. Daycare. <clears throat> and there's a depth. Okay, number four, preschools and education facilities. I think there was a change there, research. You want to turn on your mic and tell us what the change is on that one? Yeah, that's a fairly major change. It said preschools and elementary educational facilities. Now it's all educational you know, facilities. I miss that. So oh. for those college, big boys college, and universities, universities now have to be high protected. Oh, I, I I saw education, my brain, and I knew they had removed elementary, I mean, elementary, but my brain did not capture the words. That's a big change that you would never know about Yep. because there's no bullet. It was removing of a tax. Do I have a triangle? Take a there's look at no the triangle. There is no triangle on 406.12? Yes, there is. There is a there's triangle. A triangle there's right? a triangle. That was what at least we removed. Okay, yep. so now preschools, if you would just simply say, Oh, okay. Preschool might not be an educational facility, Correct. right? So you can't just say that you get it. So you have child care, preschool, education facilities, that includes the big boys. Then you have business offices, corridors, waiting rooms, and the like in clinics, medical, dental, and outpatient facilities. So every walk-in clinic, every hospital, right? Every medical facility why would you say business offices? Because there's boys in business boys offices. In too. Outside, it's opening doors, getting in places, not supposed to. Yes, Dave. I, I had an installation where they remodeled a, 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 I guess, a medical office where there was exam rooms and stuff. So it required it for the business office <clears throat> and the waiting rooms. Right. And the corridors as well. But the rooms where you put people in, they have them by themselves. <laughs> it's not required there. Hold on. Oh, God. Why? <laughs> Hold on. I mean, look at this. You're saying you need it when they're sitting outside, but once they go inside the rooms, we don't need it. Okay. Business, office, court, waiting rooms, and the like, in clinics, medical, and dental facilities, and outpatient facilities. So mm -hmm. you're saying, but well, why not inside the, the room. rooms where they, they're actually going to be? Okay, that's a good point. Maybe yeah. there's a PI. I'm not doing that one, but that might be one. Number six, subset of assembly occupancies as described in 518.2. Wow. 518.2. That's, huh? That'd be church. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of a different assembly. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different places of assembly. I mean, this is, that's where, where, Auditorium. where crowds of people are going to be. So where every time you have crowds of people, like, I see a boy over there. Okay, let's get that tamper resistant. Airports. And including places of waiting for transportation. Airports. Airports, bus stations. Train stations, bus. Gymnasiums, skating rinks, auditoriums. Dance halls. Rental car companies. There's, <laughs> there's definitely <laughs> more rental you know, car companies. <laughs> you know what? My brain was going for something crazy. 
my, when you said Ding. airports and trains, and my brain was going, I, I know there's another form of transportation <laughs> that I can't quickly come up with that would say waiting for transportation. And then you hit it right on the nail there. You're waiting for your car. Car rental places. Kayak tours. <laughs> 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 waiting for, okay. Oh, uh, 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 ski lifts. <laughs> waiting for transportation. Okay. Uh, movie theaters. Movie. Th oh, movie. Yes. Th is that a place of assembly? Movie theater. Yes. Yeah. Movie theaters. Uh, then they added what? Oh, there's some boys in dormitories. <laughs> They're not educational. Dormitories, and then the old guys. <laughs> I don't know about this whole rule here. I'm feeling a little, but actually, I think it's probably a really good idea. <laughs> you do that because there may be some electricians that retire and are in assisted living sometimes. <laughs> Let me tell know you how something. Still want to play. Let yeah. me tell you something. Some of the craziest service calls we've ever gotten have been from retired electricians. Yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't expect it to be this much fun, but we got <laughs> done 406.12, and now we know everything there is about tamper resistance receptacles and the requirements and expand it. Okay, let's look at some graphics. Non-locking type 1520 amp your receptacles in dwelling units, including garages, accessory buildings, common areas of dwelling units must be tamper resistant. And that's what it, they look like there. Okay, that was it on 406. Any comments on 406 that we might have missed? Vince just pointed out that uh, theaters are actually 520, not 518. They've got their own article. So that wouldn't be considered a 518 place of a. a so you don't have to have it in movie theaters then? I don't think so because no, it didn't it's look 520. Like... That's a different article. They, so, the... Brian, make a public input. If it's a place, <laughs> movie it theaters. A place of assembly, There's then boys it would there. Be, where they got more than 100 people, right? No, I don't think so. It, does, it says subset of assembly occupancies described in 518.2. There's, there's a couple. Examples of a place of assembly in 518.2. Okay, does it have movie? Does it have movie theaters? No, it doesn't. Okay, so if we want movie theaters, or we can simply say replace that entire list and just say all receptacles yeah. must be tamper resistant and be done with it. That, but then you get commercial buildings. Yeah, okay, we got to keep the list. All right, anything else on 406? But that's an excellent point, Vincent.